All right, so in this video, we continue our, our trust, trust analysis series, and uh, we're going to talk about here the method of joints. Um, hopefully, by the end of this, you'll be able to calculate member forces used in a truss by using the method of joints. And, uh, and to start off, you know, the method of joints is just uh, uh, is based on the idea that that because my structural system, my truss, is in equilibrium, I can isolate any other part, and uh, it will, or I can cut out, if you will, any other part, and it'll also be in equilibrium. And so if I cut out a joint here, let's say I cut out a joint right here. Um, so let me draw a little bit of that cut out joint right there. Bam, bam. And then here I've got this P for the external force. I've isolated a joint. I've drawn it out. I might have some forces in here, which I'm going to assume that they're they're positive or they're causing tension in the, in each of these members. So here I've isolated joint B right here. So here I have, let's say, I'll call this like a NBA and NBC right here, okay? And if I look at this joint right here, uh, I essentially, I want to apply equilibrium equations to this joint to solve for unknowns, okay? So that's essentially the premise is cut out a joint of, and and then apply, draw the schematic or free body diagram and then use your equilibrium equations. But I, in this case, whenever I isolate a joint here, uh, using the method of joints here, I, you know, because all my forces all act through one point, that that's, you know, when I isolate the joints, all the, all the forces act through one point, I, I don't have, you know, I can't use a moment equation, uh, you know, for my, one of my equilibrium equations. So I only have two equilibrium equations, okay? Two equilibrium equations at each joint, and that would be like some of the forces in the X equal to zero, uh, some of the forces in the Y equal to zero, right there, okay? And, and that's essentially it, you know, the idea is to, to cut out a joint, okay? And so the approach you might take to solve a problem or a trust problem, you know, your approach here would be one, to check for determinacy, okay? Determinacy, okay? And if you're if you're in statics or you're just starting out in structural analysis, you know, most of the things are gonna be stat, all your trusses are gonna be statically determinate, okay? And, and the method of joints really applies when, you, when you, the trust is statically determinate. Um, and so in this, in this video, everything that we're gonna do is gonna be statically determinate. The, if you do have a statically indeterminate truss, then you have to use some advanced techniques like the, called the displacement method or the force method of analysis to solve for that truss, okay? But that's much later and it's not, it's not really uh, gonna come up here in this video. So everything, for as far as we're concerned with respect to determinacy, let's just make it statically determinate, okay? And then two, you wanna isolate, isolate a joint, isolate joints, isolate joints, draw the FBD, Okay, all right. And when you isolate the joint, you really want to isolate where there's only two unknowns. Okay, two unknowns. That's to start out. As two unknowns. Okay, that's that's really all you can handle because you only have two equilibrium equations. So, for instance, the unknowns here are the member forces in AB, right? Member forces here. So I, I would have like member AB, member BC, and member AC right here. That would be three unknowns or three member forces. Those are unknowns right there. And then also my reactions, okay, AX, AY. So if I were to isolate joint A right here, really I have four unknowns, okay? So it's gonna be hard for me if I start out and I isolate this joint A first and I only have two equilibrium equations. I'm not gonna be able to solve for anything except just come up with some relationships. And then the same thing here, I have, if I started out by, I, in, with this truss here, if I started out by attacking joint C, okay, I, you know, I, I would have, I don't know what my member force is in BC, in CA, or CY, I don't know what the reaction CY is, that can leave me with three unknowns. So I want to start, in this problem, um, I, I probably want to start out using method of joints at joint B here to solve it without, okay? All right, alternatively, what you could have done is, you could do, right, is to solve for the reactions globally, right? A X A Y and C Y, and then go method of joints. Okay, but but here it, it 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 in this case it doesn't matter either way. All right, uh, let's see. So you want to isolate the equations, and the last thing you would do is apply your equilibrium equations. Okay, equilibrium equations. Hopefully that wasn't too much explanation. That was only about four four and a half five minutes of stuff. So so let's let's move on now and do an example problem. Okay. And if, let's see, whoa, I went too far again. So let's see where am I, here we go, okay. So let's let's do an example problem using method of joints. I have this truss here, I'm given this truss. This is a, a B, C, each of these is a joint. 
Uh, I've got 11 feet from A to D. Uh, B, the vertical distance between BC is six feet, and the vertical distance between BD is six feet. Uh, I probably want to have a, a concentrated force or uh, load at horizontal of 22 kips at, at joint C here. And I probably want to draw in my, in terms of my diagram, you know, here I have an unknown AY, uh, AX for my reactions, and then here I have DY for my reactions. Okay, and so if I, if I were to check, just to, just to check, Determinacy, okay, determinacy, I want to sum up all my unknowns, and this determine all my num unknowns were the number of members plus the number of reactions, and I want to know, is this equal to uh, my number of equations, which is 2 times the number of joints, okay, and, and so here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, members plus one two three reactions and my number of joints here let's keep a question mark we don't know for sure so one two three four four joints two times four and yes eight equals eight therefore statically determine it okay so now we can solve this using now we're saying okay it's okay to use the method of joints or method of sections let's move on so let's start with method of joints. Okay, let's use method of joints here. And let's isolate. So we're going to use method of joints, and we want to isolate a joint here. And let's see, a good candidate here for isolating the joint. Let's see, at joint A, I'd have four. At joint B, I have three unknowns. At joint D, I'd have four unknowns. Um, joint C, obviously, is, is a nice candidate because I have... Joint C here, I have only two members framing into joint C, and they cost in the load 22 kips. So let's uh, isolate and draw joint C, okay? So we're going to isolate and draw joint C. And if I do that, I have here, bam, so here's joint C. I've got a concentrated force of 22 kips, okay? And I've got the members here. Like this, I know the geometry, which is important here. Going like this, I have this cut. And so I'm going to, and one of the really important things here, one of the things you always want to do is draw, whenever you isolate a joint, you want to draw assuming the members are in tension. That way you get a positive result for tension, negative result for compression. Okay. And so here I like to do here. So drawing away from the cut, if you will, the cut out isolated joint is a, uh, uh, here, this would be joint C that I've isolated, so label that C. This is the internal force of the member starting from C going to B. Okay, so that's like a notation I like to do, and I think it's pretty common, you know, going from C to D. That way I know I'm using, you know, the um, joint C to, to solve for this out. Okay, and then I've got here, I know that this triangle right here, the angles of this is, is 3, 4, and five, I got a three, four, five triangle, and then here I've got a five, twelve, thirteen triangle here. Okay. Now the a lot of times, you know, they don't. A lot of people don't go through the hassle of drawing the members, showing a cut like this. What they'll do is, in a lot of textbooks, is is they'll just say they'll draw the joint, and then they'll just draw the forces. Here, here, twenty-two kips, and these two drawings are going to be equivalent. They'll be like an NCB and an NCD. Okay. And these are equivalent drawings, okay? These are equivalent drawings. They mean the same thing. It's just here I have a little bit more detail, if you will, okay? And so now after you do that, you want to apply the equilibrium equation. So three, apply some equilibrium equations. Equilibrium equations right here. And let's see. And so here I've got, let's see, some of the forces in the x. Some of the forces in the x equal to zero. We'll say horizontal positive to the right is 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 a uh, uh, right is positive. Ha ha ha. Twenty two kips. Uh, let's see. Twenty two kips minus. Let's see here. Minus. Uh, let's see. NCB and the cosine of that is uh, let's see four fifths. Okay. And then let's see minus NCD. And the cosine of that is 5 thirteenths equal to 0. So there's one equation. And then some of the forces in the y equal to 0, positive upward. 
I have, and let's see, da da da, it tells me that I have a minus NCB because it's the, the Y component, if you will, three fifths, okay? Uh, the sign of whatever, the vertical part, three fifths minus NCD times 12 thirteenths equal to zero. Okay, and I have two equations, two unknowns, and I can solve for those. I'll stop here and I'll finish the rest in the in the next part, next in another video or the next video, just because I'm I'm beyond this ten minute deal. All right, enjoy.